So there are two things that go hand in hand when it comes to color grading. You got the technical side, you got the creative side. The creative goal of color grading is to enhance the storytelling, right? Sounds simple. The technical aspect is not only knowing your tools and how to use them, when to use them, but your biggest challenge as a colorist almost always is time. That's your ultimate enemy. So the two, my go-to tools that I use day in and day out on every professional gig, I'm about to reveal that for you right here. And it is going to shave tremendous amount of time. I'm talking serious time gains after you learn this and apply it to your workflow. So get super pumped about that. And we recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing, and working with 8-bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A. And you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of my personal LUTs. You can watch the training by clicking on the link up top or in the description below. And without any further ado, let's roll the intro. So I'm super excited to be sharing these tips with you guys because it's really going to help you speed up your entire color grading process. Let's just jump right in, okay? This is shot on Alexa. It's from a music video that I graded that you can check out. Link is in the description. Let's look at our project. It's shot in Alexa and our project settings, when you click on this cog wheel right here, under color management, it's basically unmanaged. Right now it's just set to DaVinci, YRGB, Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. We can just leave it as is, all right? Let's just say I'm gonna create five nodes total. Um, I don't think we're gonna use that many, but let's just do that for now. I'm gonna label this CST. So this is gonna be my color space transform. We're gonna drop that on. And first of all, we're just gonna convert this from log to Rec 709. So let's select the right parameters. Input color space, we know that this is shot on Alexa, so let's choose Ari Alexa. Input gamma is uh, log C. And as soon as we do that, it's converted to Rec 709 properly. We don't need to fill this out, output color space or output gamma, since we already selected that in our timeline settings, okay? But if you have something else selected in your timeline, let's just say if I have DaVinci white gamut selected, you're gonna see the colors are gonna shift, all right? Because now our timeline is actually set up in a wider gamut, DaVinci wide gamut. So all these notes are gonna behave accordingly, meaning for our color space transform, we have to manually plug in Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4, but let's just go back and um, we're gonna select Rec 709, Gamma 2.4, and now everything should look proper, okay? So we're good for now. Just wanted to make sure that I selected the right one and I did not. I selected Rec 2020, but I wanna select Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. So now, everything should look proper, okay? So we're already parked on our hero frame. And what I wanna show you is this. So usually what happens is, let's just say the cinematographer sits with you and goes, we wanna go for a high key look, let's bring the entire image up. So usually what you would do, you would go under your primaries, you would take your offset right here and you will raise that up, okay? So let's just look at this example in a different way. Let's just say that this is going to be a horror movie and the DP goes, let's make it super dark. So when you pull this down, the director of photography is expecting it to drop like stops as it was shot like that. But unfortunately, right now, we are working in a Rec 709 color space. And more importantly, the way these tools behave is that everything is happening after the way it was shot, okay? So when we bring this down, let's just see what's happening right here. You see like how everything is just getting clipped and that information is just gone. So if I were to save this version, okay? And then reset this node. Now I'm gonna go to my first favorite tool that I've been using a lot in Resolve 17.4, which is HDR palette, okay? And the difference between this and what we just saw in a regular primaries offset is that here we can actually select our color space at gamma. So let's just say the color space is Ari Alexa and gamma is log C. What does that mean? What this means is that now this control is going to behave like you are actually changing the exposure in camera, okay? And this right here, the exposure meter, 
turns into just like how it is on a camera. So if I want to pull it up a stop, I can just double click on this and hit one and hit enter. And now it just brought up a full stop. So this is a lot easier also to communicate with your cinematographer as well compared to working in this method, which you're just sort of like eyeballing it and don't necessarily have a way to measure by stops. OK, so that is a very cool difference, something that we did not have access to before. So here, um, if I were to make it dark, look at how differently it behaves. Like, look at this. Now, this actually like we brought it down to by two and a half stops and it actually feels like it was shot later in the day. Let's match the results. Look at this. OK, what we did here and you see like how stuff got clipped. If we go back in our primaries and how we were pulling this down. Remember when you pull this down, it looked like that and like everything was clipped and it just looks so weird compared to like what's happening here. Like everything, all the information is there. Like, look at that. So HDR palette. All the information is there. Look, the roll offs are really gentle, soft, whereas here, super digital looking blacks are gone. It feels like it was done in post compared to here, which it exactly feels like it was done in camera. So now I wanted to show you the darker version to prove a point, but I'm going to reset that. And what I want to do instead is let's go back into our, our HDR palette and Let's just say we create a more of a high key look. So I'm actually going to crank this up and keep it somewhere around here. All right. To which you might say, dude, this is too bright. What's going on? So let's go in here and let's use our traditional tools like our contrast and add a little bit of contrast. And then what I want to do is I want to take my pivot, bring it down a little bit. So we just have a little bit more weight to our image. And even if I put it somewhere around here, you see like it gave us enough contrast so our skin and colors don't look thin. But then at the same time, what we did here, we created a really nice stylized high key look. OK, so that was done by using our HDR wheels offset and literally bringing it up by 0.82 or we can even just do 0.75. So three quarters of a stop, right? Three quarters. We just brought up three quarters. Uh, to a stop and it gives us this and the DP will know exactly what's happening, right? Like if he's uncomfortable with like pushing it that much, he'll tell you, all right, let's just give me half a stop. OK, um, so this looks great. Nothing is blown out. All the information is there at this point. The other tool that I want to show you is this. So we go right here under color warper and I'm also going to compare it with another tool that I use a lot, which is HSL curves. And that was the way that you would do what I'm about to show you before. But now I think with color warper, it's a lot easier. Why is that? Let's just go and create a hypothetical scenario. Let's just say the director goes, I want the her shorts to be more of a proper yellow. OK, instead of like this fluorescent green, I want it to be yellow and I want it to be a little bit darker. So traditionally, you would do this. You would go under your curves. OK, you would go under hue versus hue, which is this. And you will tap this area right here to select it. OK, and then you will take that and you will pull it down. Right. So where do we want to go? We want to go up a little bit. And now we're adding that color and then we can spread it. Right. So like it's gentle. Right. So now it's pretty gentle. It's pretty organic. We can keep it somewhere around here. So we're kind of doing it. And but now we just changed the hue versus hue. Now we got to go under hue versus saturation and they also wanted to make it saturate. So we got to click right here. Now we got to add more saturation. We got to spread it out so it's smooth. We got to go back on this and move it over so everything looks pretty good. Then they want it to be a little bit deeper of a yellow than what it is. So we're going to go to hue versus luminance and we're going to click on it again and then we're going to pull it down a little bit, right? Not too much. And then we're going to go over and now we're going to spread it out, go back and we're going to move it over something like that. And it took this long to do this. The results are really clean. So that is amazing. That's why I love using HSL curves. So the job got done. But it took a while. And as a colorist, you know, you're always fighting against time. OK, so now what I want to show you is I want to reset that and show you a much faster 
and even a more accurate, efficient way, which is by using Color Warper, okay? And it is way more granular than what we just did, but you don't have to keep doing the same thing three times. You can do it all, all at once, okay? So first thing that we wanna do is like right now, uh, this spider web, if you will, is very general. So six by six grid, right? We wanna change that. We wanna have more control over each step of the saturation and hue of our grade, all right? So I'm gonna click on this guy right here and I'm gonna spread it out to 12. I think 12 gives you a pretty good result. You can even go to 16 and make it even more granular, but I think this is good enough for me. So at this point, what I wanna do is I can just go close right here, hover over here, and you will see that it will mark it in my web right there, spider web, and I can just click right here and then pull back. So here we can adjust hue, saturation, and luminance all at once. So we have the skirt selected. Let's go ahead and make it uh, more of a pure yellow, something like this, this looks good. Let's go ahead, add some saturation. So we can add saturation right here and let's go make it a bit deeper, right? So we can just pull this down like so, and this doesn't look bad and I can even swing the hue up a little bit more, right? Just make it warmer. And all of that got done just with a simple swing right here by selecting it in our hue versus saturation, okay? Everything is gonna stick and everything is gonna look proper, okay? So let's go back to our hero frame. And at this point, we can also go, well, what about the sky? Can we do something with the sky? Let's go ahead, select this area right here, click on it, so it is selected right here. I'm gonna start with the hue. I'm gonna start swinging it and see where do I like it. So maybe I like a little bit of a teal variation in the sky, something like that. So it's a warm, sunny day. And now let's take the saturation and crank it. Obviously always go too far and then pull it back. So something like this. And just by doing these two simple things, look at what we ended up with, okay? Now, obviously if you know, you're like, hey, I don't wanna change the color of her top then you are going to adjust the sky on a different node so you can garbage mat this area right here and invert it so everything else is affected but not her uh, blouse or her jacket, okay? So that's how that's gonna go. So these two tools, as you saw, like how many steps we were able to shave off? Now imagine you doing that on the spot with your client. It will literally take hours off your work and you can use that time creating power windows, working on your secondaries, and like really make your project sync. So guys, I'm gonna say it again. I cannot stress enough how important time is when it comes to color grading and having these tools over the traditional means to attack the things that I attacked here. And you will see how much extra time you will gain that you will end up spending on the creative process of color grading, which is more fun, let's just be honest. So if you enjoyed this content, then do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness, if you want to deep dive and learn more about color grading, then definitely check out the free training. Link is up top and in the description below. And remember, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed. I will see you guys in the next video.